So she's not shying you away from anything. You consider that stand-up comedy? Pardon? You consider that stand-up comedy? Yeah, I do. I consider what I'm doing stand-up straight to the camera, and I'm playing with it's the not. editing a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, I find it's actually crazier, because there's... It's different. It's, it's different. Not, I'm not shying on it, but it's not stand-up comedy. I find with stand-up, like, you get that instant gratification of the crowd, which I love, and I don't get that there, and but you, you also, get a lot more hecklers online than you ever you get in person. Edit. Yeah. That's the only why, thing why that isn't makes it, it different. Yeah, why isn't it stand-up comedy? Because it's not in a live audience. In front of an audience. And you can edit it. But. And there's a craft to stand-up comedy comedian. where you create. I'm sorry, go ahead. There's different, I feel like there's different brands of comedians. Right. And, and YouTube is one of them. But it's way different than stand-up. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Ajay here. Today, I'm going to be talking about Nicole Arbor. Nicole is a YouTuber who became famous almost overnight when she uploaded a controversial video called Dear Fat People in 2015. She was then exposed for being physically abusive in her relationship with fellow YouTuber Matthew Santoro. Since then, her career horrifically declined due to her toxic behavior and unlikable personality. This is the story of the rise and fall of Nicole Arbor. Nicole Arbor was born on June 26, 1985 in Canada. She was a cheerleader for the Toronto Raptors, a choreographer, and a stand-up comedian. She also appeared topless in a movie called Silent But Deadly. Nicole created her YouTube channel on November 9, 2006 and started off by uploading clips of her comedy routines. However, Nicole actually added laugh tracks to some of them to make them seem funnier than they actually were. If you listen with headphones, the laughs occasionally only sound through one ear, which is a dead giveaway that they were added in. Also, you can hear the audience clapping loudly, but in the video, no one appears to actually be clapping. And her arms only go like this, and her chest is always like this. Try not to come, buddy. Like this. <laughs> Additionally, the laughs just sounded awkwardly inserted into places that didn't make sense. As someone who knows that starting off on YouTube can be rough, I can kind of understand why she did what she did, but her viewers did think it was odd. But despite the rough start, Nicole kept uploading and eventually hit her stride. In August 2015, she uploaded a video called Dear Instagram Models. In it, she talked to the camera while wearing a bra and called out Instagram models for not being real models. The video was a smash hit and currently has 1.6 million views on YouTube. She continued making videos in this style and by August 2015, Nicole reached 100,000 subscribers. However, everything drastically changed one month later. That's because on September 14, 2015, she uploaded a video called Dear Fat People. In the video, she insulted fat people quite aggressively. For example, she said they smell like sausages. And they complain, and they smell like sausages, and I don't even think they ate sausages, that's just their aroma. They were so fat that they're that standing sweat fat. Crisco was coming out of their pores like a Play-Doh fun factory. <laughs> Naturally, the video erupted in controversy and many people accused Nicole of fat shaming. In fact, Nicole claimed that YouTube even took the video down temporarily. In response, she capitalized on the situation and tweeted this. Wow, I'm the first comedian in the history of at YouTube to be hashtag censored. There are graphic videos about murder and torture, but satire is... The tweet garnered 1300 likes but seemed overly dramatic and offered no proof at all that she was in fact the first comedian to be censored on YouTube. Not convinced, some even theorized that Nicole took the video down herself just to get more attention. Creator Tyler Oakley then responded to Nicole's video on Twitter saying, At Nicole Arbor, this is disappointing content. Nicole then replied by tweeting, I was told that if I started getting too big too fast online, a guy named Tyler Oakley would find something to get mad at and send his fans after me. That meant if his friends didn't like what I was doing or even my outfits and reported back to him, especially the people who comment rude shit on everything I do, I had to worry. I was told to be afraid of him because him and his friends will try to ruin your career. They will get you spammed until you have a nervous breakdown and they will try and get fans to contact your sponsors. But I just don't give a shit. Dude, you are the bully. It's you. I don't care if you like my videos. I'm not raping people, I'm a comedian. And while it's cool that you make content eating dog food and making crafts on your channel, I'm over here putting my ass on the line and being hella brave to try and change the world in a new way. So F to internet police, I'm on this next level hashtag go team. Nicole later appeared on The View because of her video and tried to make a joke that she was most offended by her hair but was called out by Whoopi Goldberg. You know, a lot of people were uh, offended. I, I, are you surprised? Do you understand why people 
are offended by? Frankly, I'm the most offended by my hair in that video. If I would have known it would go no, no, viral. Babe, babe, babe. God. You're here. This is your this is your shot. And when she tried to claim that she made the video because she cared about other people's health, Joy Behar then said that she was bullshitting. And then you sort of hide behind this, well, it's not healthy. That's bull. And you know the it. You don't care about your health. Come on. The whole thing was a joke. It really was a joke. Like, oh, the whole thing was a joke, and I make fun of myself all the time. Like, I know that I look like side chick Barbie. I realize this, and I make jokes about it all the time. She ultimately ended her appearance on an awkward note by stating that she was just making a joke and her goal was to offend people because she was a comedian. Interestingly, Nicole also made a video called Most Offensive Video Ever and defended her use of stereotypes, which resulted in even more backlash and just made the situation worse. It received a massive amount of dislikes, and people memed her constantly in the comments. However, despite the negative criticism, the attention that she got grew her channel considerably. By December 2015, Nicole had amassed over 250,000 subscribers. She continued her successful trend and made videos called Dear Refugees, Dear Feminists, and Dear Sluts. She even made one called Dear Black People and compared appropriating black culture to Polish culture by eating pickles. It was all a dream. I used to read Seventeen magazine. Bunch of white girls going to prom in the limousine. I see y'all using pickles at your barbecues? On your hamburgers? Yeah, that's appropriating Polish culture. But I ain't even mad at you. Cause pickles are delicious. Can we just get on this whole appropriation of black culture thing right now? The hate got so bad that Nicole removed the like to dislike ratio on the video as well as several others. As a YouTuber myself, I actually had no idea that you could even do that. In January 2016, Nicole was exposed by her ex-boyfriend Matthew Santoro for being controlling and abusive in a video he posted on his channel. Matthew Santoro was a much bigger YouTuber who had several million subscribers at the time. In the video, he didn't mention her name explicitly, but everyone knew he was talking about her. In it, he said that she made him push people out of his life and that she hit him. And this individual that I was with... <sighs> forced me to push everybody out of my life. I pushed my family away. I pushed my closest friends away. And it wasn't always explicit. It wasn't always like push that person away, push that person away, delete them off social media. Although that was the case, mostly with females, this individual that I was with was extremely jealous, viciously jealous. If I had a female friend, I must have been cheating on her with them. I've been cheating on them the whole time. Uh, I had to cut every female out of my life out of social media, delete every number out of my phone. And it was because everything was made to be about her. And I, I lost my friends, I lost my closest friends because I was made to believe that everybody else was a loser. Everybody else in my life that didn't agree with this relationship they're losers. That's why they're saying these things and you need to cut them out of your life. So I did. Early in the relationship, we had, I had a verbal altercation with this individual where after I, I had a panic attack one night because I couldn't handle walking on eggshells around this person. Uh, so I left an event that I was at and I broke it off with this individual. This person prevented me from leaving their home and said, you're not going anywhere. At which point I was hit in the face. And as a result, he said that he broke up with her. Nicole, disliked by the public already, released a response video called Abuse Story, My Side of Things. In it, she stated that she was the one that ended things. She also mentioned that the reason that she broke up with Matthew was because he constantly made her private life public and overstepped her boundaries. But I had asked repeatedly while dating him that my private life not be put on the internet. And he repeatedly overstepped that boundary to where I felt violated. This was likely because Matthew had a vlog channel and was active on Periscope. Nicole also said that they had broken up once before and then he moved near her and they subsequently got back together. After we broke up, while we were broken up, he got a place down the street from me in hopes that we'd get back together, and we did. And we did, and we dated for a bunch of months after that, and it was fine. But I unfortunately just 
something in my heart didn't feel it anymore. She then claimed that she never abused him and chided him for using kids as a hate army against her, which didn't make a lot of sense as Matthew had a diverse audience. Uh, he didn't. He didn't suffer from domestic abuse. It didn't happen. And it makes me very sad that he would use his platform. I can take it. If you, you want to aim at me, I can take it. Don't use kids to be a hate army. I think that's what's wrong with YouTube. Despite the contradicting stories, the general public took Matthew's side as Nicole's account had too many holes in it. In fact, the YouTubers Grade A under A and Keemstar even accused her of lying. At that point, Nicole's reputation couldn't seem to get any worse. That was until she released a video called This Is America, Women's Edit in 2018. It was her take on Childish Gambino's famous music video This Is America and focused on women's rights. Unsurprisingly though, after she posted it, Nicole was immediately heavily criticized for taking the black struggle and making it about something else. In response, she wrote this statement on Twitter. In retrospect, due to the sensitive nature of the original, I understand why some people are wrongly portraying this as white versus black. However, this was not the intent or theme at all. We had a very diverse cast and creative team working on project from start to finish who signed on to honor the original while adding more truth from another perspective. I also understand my cheeky responses to hateful comments have been taken out of context and I take full responsibility for responding to trolls in a way that could be so easily manipulated and become hurtful when reposted without context. I firmly believe the best thing that can happen in America and North America right now is for everyone to create their own version of this video and show what life is like from their side. Through this honesty, I believe we can discover a new level of empathy and understanding for each other that will ultimately and finally lead us to healing and unity that is desperately needed in society. What can we agree on? What do we have in common? Where are we hurting? Start there and rebuild. Unfortunately, Nicole's response demonstrated that she missed the point entirely and she became a laughingstock on social media as a result. As of today, the music video has been removed from her channel. And after the entire debacle, she started to upload less and less over time. Soon her views started declining and she eventually faded out of the public eye. However, in an attempt to revive her career, she uploaded a video in September 2019 called Nicole Arbor Exposed Part 2 Surviving Matthew Santoro. In it, she stated that she experienced a head injury and then met Matthew, someone she claims that she never would have dated ordinarily. Nicole also mentioned that she was told to cross-promote with Matthew, claiming she was famous for much music when in actuality she was not very well known at all and Matthew had millions of subscribers. Fresh off a head injury. Let me say that again. Head injury. I was introduced to a YouTuber and told, hey, you guys should totally work together. I think you'll get along. It'll be good for your channels to like cross-promote. I was just starting like the youtube -y type stuff. But I had been on Much Music, which is like Canadian MTV, and a lot of people knew me there. So I started dating this dude that I would never date in a million years before him was like rockstar, rockstar, popstar, rockstar, athlete, athlete, athlete. She then mentioned that she lightly slapped him to prevent him from drunk driving. One night we were at an event and he was drinking a ton. We go back to my place, takes his keys and goes to drive. I was like, you can sleep on the couch if you want, but you are not driving drunk, not on my watch. I gave him a little slap, it wasn't like a... There was no wind up. Shocked him enough to take the keys, threw him down my shirt and was like, you're not leaving, stood in front of the door. He started screaming that I was trying to kill him. So I was like, this keys by I'm not dealing with that. And then she claimed that Matthew said that she was going to commit suicide and was detained by the police. Hours later, I'm sitting on the couch talking to a friend and the police show up at my place. He had told the police that I was gonna kill myself because we were breaking up. That didn't happen. But I had to go with the police because he reported that I was gonna commit suicide. I was like, but I didn't. I didn't say that. Quick little chat with the doctor. They're like, why are you here? By the time I got home, he had already released a big dramatic vlog about our breakup. Finally, Nicole blamed her manager for forcing her to make a response video to create a dramatic storyline. It was just the whole f***ing thing was a setup. My YouTube manager called him and was like, Nicole, you have to make a video right now. I'm like, uh, uh, and say what? A rebuttal video. He's like, I'll send you a script. I'm like, what? He's like, your whole career is, is weighing on this. Did you see what he said about you? I haven't even had a chance to see it. I was like, I was just in a freaking hospital for no reason because he told people I was going to commit suicide, but I wasn't good. Unfortunately, though, the video didn't take off and came out several years too late. Nicole's reputation was so horribly damaged and the drama was so long ago that people either didn't believe her or had already moved on. One month later in October 2019, Nicole got into drama again when she appeared on Luis J. Gomez's podcast. On the podcast, she said that she didn't consider herself a YouTuber despite uploading multiple videos. Like a YouTube star, right? Or something like that. 
ish. I'm just a comedian. And then I just did YouTube stuff because they wanted me to post videos on YouTube. She then got upset at Luis Gomez when he made a joke and said that most girls acted like Nicole when they liked him. Yeah. Every girl that likes me acts like this at first. Literally every girl. So. I, I'm, I just have to believe you. I just have I'm to, like, sorry that I have to it. fucking drag you into reality. That's your future. Look at it. No, I don't want to look at that. What up, girl? girl? <laughs> this is it. It hurts my soul. And when asked if she didn't want to reveal if she had a boyfriend because it would turn off her fan base, Nicole claimed that people didn't follow her only because of her looks. Yeah. Do you have a boyfriend, Nicole? Maybe. Do you? Whoa. Maybe. She's, now, you know what it is? I I, it. She doesn't want to say it because nope. she knows that'll she does have a boyfriend. Here's what happened. I know exactly yeah. what happened. I, I know exactly too. Like the boyfriend will be mad <laughs> if he, she says no. Yeah. But I'm not saying the only people that follow you. I'm just I saying that, that you have a you do have a doodly fan base. I don't actually. It's 55 percent <clears throat> women. Hey, analytics. Well, yeah, that's true. That's what that's what Trump said about who voted for. Yeah, him. right. Um, I don't believe those numbers. Mm -hmm. no, I'm no, just saying. True. The I'm, reason, just, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just. Do you, the reason you don't talk about your boyfriend is because you know that it'll f turn off a certain sect of your fan base. It literally doesn't. Mo like. I get nothing on it. However, when Lewis and the other members of the podcast looked through her Instagram comments and pointed out they were mainly from thirsty dudes, Nicole got defensive and said it was weird and disrespectful. Well, how many? Uh, 7,915. 7, okay. Most people are not into marketing. So okay, so go down okay. to the picture of her right there. That one. Okay, not that. 25,000. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is so awkward no it's what's not. awkward yes, what's wrong awkward. she's getting oh, she i mean it, it's a, just an interesting thing that you're well, saying that like it is an interesting I mean, thing that you guys are acting you don't like think that you having I'm hot are because of the way i look when no, you're well, you're later that night she made a video called nicole arbor destroys sexist comedy festival owner in it she accused lewis of being creepy and insulting ironically though she then insulted him we all know that i could have verbally assassinated that puerto rican jiminy cricket looking mother Jesus. Her stance was contradictory considering that Nicole was a self-proclaimed anti-PC comic but got offended at the anti-PC comedy Lewis used. Her attempts to cancel him later extended onto Twitter with Nicole tweeting, You threatened to end my career if I didn't go along with your jokes about having sex with me in advances. But after a long fight that involved Nicole deleting her posts, Lewis decided to move on. He wrote, After talking to some friends and much careful consideration, I've decided that podcasting or even being in the same room as Nicole Arbor again would be a bad idea. This will be the last time I mention her. Speaking of podcasts, Nicole also appeared on the Theo Vaughn podcast prior to the Lewis Gomez one. On Reddit, she was suspected to have filed a lawsuit against Theo Vaughn because the headphones hurt her ears. As of right now, this is all speculation though. In March 2020, Nicole appeared on the Prager University podcast and showed no remorse or understanding of why what she did was wrong. The host for some reason claimed that Nicole Arbor was the first internet breakout star. Oddly, Nicole didn't refute or correct this, demonstrating her large ego. I'm kind of like the first internet breakout star. Yeah. Not as big as Justin Bieber. I mean, he's Canadian. He's a Canadian. win is a win. We'll yeah, take it. a win yeah, yeah. is a win. You're Canadian. Yeah. Um, but I remember you were kind of the first one that sort of made this a thing where you could like be a personality on the internet and sort of earn your own income that way. Yeah. And Instead, she merely stated that she was canceled for telling the truth regarding her Dear Fat People video. Then you did this horrible thing. I know, I told the truth. You told the truth. Oh, and gosh. the rule number one on the internet, <laughs> if you want to survive, yeah. is to never tell the truth. Be a liar. Be a liar. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. Exactly. And you did and a lie. video and it was called Dear Fat People. Yeah. And do you want to recap what you said that was so horrible? Uh, basically, calories in and calories out is how you monitor your weight. Right. It's kind of like if you're eating too much food and being lazy, that's why you're fat. Mm -hmm. It's not a disability. You did it yourself. And I meant it. She even claimed that she was dumbfounded when the women of The View didn't understand that they were mad about nothing. And I remember being on The View and just being dumbfounded that these women didn't understand that they were mad about nothing. Overall, Nicole Arbor's career started with controversy and has been filled with drama ever since. She appears to have not learned a single thing from her countless mistakes even six years later. Honestly, she's pretty much the same person today as she was back then. Currently, Nicole rarely uploads to her YouTube channel and most of her views are a fraction of what they were. And some of her current videos are just plain offensive and not funny at all. They're gonna buy America. It's, it's gonna be China. If you think cancel culture is bad, wait till they put you on a train to a concentration camp. <laughs> However, Nicole still has about 1 million followers on Instagram and 2.6 million followers on Facebook. She does have online platforms, but was pretty much chased off of YouTube. Personally, I think Nicole needs to reflect deeply on why she got into so many controversies and has to learn from her wrongdoings. 
Until then, she won't convince people that she's changed and will continue to be disliked. Maybe Nicole will one day realize this, but only time will tell. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider giving me a big thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. Peace.